Okay, so um, any public invited to be heard? You know that you work with the recording. Okay, fantastic. And uh, did everyone have an opportunity to review the minutes from the last meeting? Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Thank you, Tom. Is there a second? Thank you, Katie. All right, all in favor? Okay. Any opposed? Okay, that is unanimous. Um, and we'll move on to accessions. So, I think I'll hand it over to you. Uh, um, there should be a short presentation this month. You just got the one uh, donation, the one gift. This is a large collection of images that came in. Anne Denny uh, is a local historian um, and author of a few books of Boulder, Boulder County area. And donated, let's see, 
the benefit uh, and very interesting not only are there things here but also at area farms uh, auditorium is kind of shifting from winter spring to summer programming summer concerts will be starting out Similarly, education right now shifting school to last school tour was today. Um, and uh, a little over two weeks, and they will be uh, moving to summer camp now. Uh, summer camps, once again, are all nearing the completely full. So we're very excited about that for uh, the museum's programming this summer. Collections, Eileen's been working a lot on various software projects, getting our new collection management software up and running, doing a new mobile website that will connect for the new uh, agriculture and responsibilities and all that. Um, lots of installations with our public places. Uh, we are seeing uh, good visitation, the duality exhibit kind of declined a little bit in the last month, but we're hoping we can have a push. And we extended the uh, run a week uh, in part because the guest curator, uh, Greg Deal, is actually the keynote speaker at a National Museum Conference that's gonna be in Denver starting this Friday. Uh, so uh, uh, we hope a lot of folks from that museum conference will come up and check out the exhibit uh, while they're in, in Denver, so especially because they're Um, I will let Megan talk more about the capital campaign, her report, and um, marketing is, is you know, uh, marketing duality and this Council in support of the Museum Expansion and Capital Campaign. 
So Joanne included that in the packet for, um, for today. So do you want to update everybody on the council meeting? Sure, sure. So April 26th, um, City Council uh, voted to place um, several city projects on the November ballot, um, including a new recreation center, a uh, new branch library, uh, performing arts center. Um, the museum uh, had elected uh, not to be on that list uh, because we were doing the capital campaign. Um, but we did very much want council to be aware of the importance of operating funds um, and that that's really the key thing that the city can provide. Um, and that was actually something that several council members did mention in that meeting that um, uh, they thought once funding had been raised for museum expansion that um, a ballot issue should be placed uh, on a future ballot, not, not this year, but uh, subsequent year, uh, that would be dedicated to museum operating expenses. Um, so I thought that was very positive. Uh, city Council did recognize the need for operating uh, support for the city. And uh, so that's that's kind of where, where we are. Um, city staff is obviously doing a lot of research now on exactly how much these uh, ballot issues are going to cost to get the final language that will go on the for ballot. Just an observation. Discussion about delaying to 2024. Uh, so, you know, uh, certainly I think a resolution from the advisory board supporting that future uh, uh, museum operating uh, expense ballot issue. Uh, would strengthen our ability to go back. One of the things that we are planning to do is go back to city council and have them pass their own resolution, which wouldn't be able to bind a future council, but at least would provide a documentation that this council feels strongly that the um, this museum operating should be on a future uh, ballot. So, uh, having support from the so should we do a motion? Yeah, does anybody have any questions about the language of the resolution? Any concerns? Beautiful job. Yeah, yeah. 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 we have one change and it's been changed. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a grammatical, you know. Okay, so yes, the motion would be great. I move that we accept the resolution as written. Is there a second? Okay, Catherine. Uh, all in favor? Okay, that is unanimous. Fantastic. So that resolution is adopted. We'll, we'll proceed with it. Um, so persuasive. <laughs> <laughs> Great, so we'll send that over to the city council. Well, I just want to thank Eric for uh, relatively short notice for all the statistics that he provided to me. I think it was Monday, and I think that on Tuesday. So thank you for all uh, that good information. Thanks so much to Tom and to Katie for speaking. Yes, sorry, I'm a little fried today. Uh, but yes, we appreciate uh, the folks that, that spoke. And uh, I uh, uh, look forward to uh, uh, working on this one. Yeah, it seems like there's lots of irons in the fire <laughs> for me now. Uh, so, speaking of which, Megan, do you want to talk about the capital campaign? Sure. So hi everyone, I'm Megan Peters, for those of you who I have met. It's really nice to see you 
all. Um, so I'll talk broad strokes about the Capital Campaign. We are having a Capital Campaign, which is very exciting to expand um, the museum different capacities. And so currently where we are, we have contracted with Prismatic Consulting. They're a local consulting group out of Guatemala, which has been really great and um, allowed us to move seamlessly into some things. And they are wrapping up a feasibility study, which will inform a lot of how we are going to move forward. And then um, the other simultaneous thing that's happening is I am putting together a capital campaign committee. So if you or anyone you know in the community is interested in um, being an outspoken advocate for the museum and our travel campaign, please send them my way. Um, but those are, those are kind of the big things that are happening right now. And I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has. Yeah, relatively new to Walmart, although it's been six or seven years now. What type of corporate support do you do in the area organizations or nonprofits see? Yeah. Or are you familiar with? That's a great question. It's definitely something we're going to be exploring. Um, the museum does have some partnerships that have that sustain us in a more general op operating way and for currently existing projects, like that's, for example, Elevation Credit Union is the presenting sponsor of the day of the day. And High um, Point Bank, High Point Bank just came in as the presenting sponsor for a of the series. So there definitely is corporate support towards the museum. We haven't quite gotten to the place where we're going to try and see what that looks like in a capital capacity, but it's certainly under the That's a number that we, for us to be council, is kind of what we think would be a, a top amount. I can't say that that's what it's going to actually be moving forward. It's going to depend a lot on what we see from this feasibility study and um, how things move forward in, in looking at plans and, and all of that. And five million has been raised. Is that right? Yes. 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 Five million has been committed from the council As well as. One point six million from the city. Yes. All right, so almost seven million. Are you Eric had spoken last time about the different phases of the expansion? So are you planning on doing the capital campaign or considering doing the capital campaign in phases as well, or trying to get a, a top line number and, and just great question. Um, a little bit of both. Certainly the idea would be that we front load a lot of the donations and get a lot of money in the door up front so we can just move forward before um, inflation and, and things keep expanding the, the cost. But as with any fundraising, but specifically with capital campaign fundraising, we feel confident that there will be more support as we start to see things happening, you know, as, as walls come down and as the community is more aware that this is really happening. And then certainly there will be a large push at the end to get us over the threshold. And um, there are a lot of donors who like to come in and be the hero gift, and um, so we'll take it. And so there will be some phasing, but that won't really be the public persona of the fundraising. It'll be kind of um, seamless. How much do you need to raise? Or the product, the physical product expansion actually begins? That's a great question. The expansion is actually already uh, started. Um, in fact, the contract for phase 1A is being signed this week, which converts our uh, textile storage, uh, which we empty out and moved all the collection to our offsite. Um, to offices, um, so that, which is about 340,000, will uh, we'll start uh, I don't know, later in September. Uh, so that that's already underway, and then the uh, the 
next phase is, is redoing the courtyard, um, that uh, we hope to start uh, ideally late this year if we can get all the permits and permissions in place. Do you have enough money? Yeah. Do you have enough money? And we have enough money for, for those for those projects. And then phase, uh, we're calling phase two, uh, uh, would be gallery expansion. Please uh, get enough of that. And at uh, this point, um, that would still require additional money. How much more? That is still something we're we're working on. As you all may know, construction prices are are crazy right now. So just trying to keep ahead of those has been a, a challenge in this project. Um, and so we are working with our architects and, and also with staff on prioritizing and, and choosing uh, uh, making sure we get what we really Phases are there? Um, right now, as conceptualized, there are three. Uh, and so the third phase would be uh, an education wing um, and also new entry and things like that. And that would go where? That would go uh, basically most of the expansion would go to the west, and then the education wing would kind of go to the north. Uh, all of this is, is still very much. So the courtyard and the office renovations, is that part of the steward monies, or is that reserves um, that, that it is, I mean, essentially the, the steward and city funding combine to allow us to, uh, to do those phases. Well, what if any role do you receive naming rights for when you get to the expansion, expansion, expansion. It's a great question. So um, one of the, the things that we're really focusing on with the capital campaign is making sure that it's community-based, that the, the local community really feels an involvement and a buy-in to what's happening here. To that end, this is not going to solidify the, the idea that's rising to the top is that certainly there are going to be some donors who are interested in naming rights and in those conversations we're hoping to shift a little from traditional naming rights to focusing on historical figures in Longmont and naming spaces after people who have paved the way to be where we are and so uh, again those conversations are really evolving and how donors feel and, and what our community uh, engagement looks like, but as it stands, move down the line, we will hope to have a group of people come together and vet, for lack of a better word, names of different rooms that could be presented as options for naming rooms. Are there, is there anywhere in the expansion that s smaller donations, the way we give for seats and seats in the steward auditorium or you know not yes I mean, definitely yes to have an impact you don't have to donate a new medium way um certainly again we're very focused on making this a community effort and making sure that every dollar is recognized and understood to be meaningful because we're just we're not going to get to where we need without a lot of support and on all different levels. And so actually Angela called me earlier and I can't get over the story. I think it's so wonderful. And she was talking to a community member and they handed her five dollars to be to go towards the expansion. And I think that you know if those are the first if that's the first money we raise from the community, I think that that's really beautiful that people see the value in the museum, see the value in our different places and that's the campaign that we want to run. We want everyone to know, no matter what the gift is, it's appreciated, it's going towards making this museum a, a place for everyone. Anything in the door knobs after April? 
Light switches. Right. <laughs> Megan, could you walk us through a little bit about uh, what the feasibility study is? Sure. Yeah. So um, it's the the consulting group have we identified different people who are connected to media in, in different ways. So uh, program participants, donors, members, different board members, all of the above, um, and just kind of did a, a broad across the board reach. And they are interviewing those people as to what their perception of the museum is, what the community's perception of the museum is, and that will inform a lot of our marketing and how we talk about this campaign in our community. And then also asking some of the questions around, do you think you can support this? And if so, at what level, with no guarantee, with no pledge or guarantee that that's what it would be, but just to get a broad assessment of what, you know, the money coming in is gonna look like about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But again, if anyone in this room would like to be more involved in the capital campaign or knows anyone who they think would like to be more involved in the capital campaign, send them my way. I'd love to talk with them. Well, thank you, Megan. Yeah, of course. All right, so it looks like we also need to uh, have a nomination committee uh, for interviews for the open positions on the advisory board. So we need two members um, who are willing to volunteer to interview the candidates. Um, I believe that is the report said that there are four candidates for the four positions. Mm -hmm. okay. So three terms that are expiring, people have um, elected to renew or interview to renew and then one unfilled position. So it could be the board member. Um, so is there anyone interested? Well kind of eliminates three of them. Yes, those who <laughs> are that's how much they can do is the candidates are up for I know you did it last year. I did it last year and it's a wonderful experience but Situation, and that's almost easier when you're sure. when you when you want somebody to come in and talk to you for four minutes. It's hard to have them drive across town, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I would suggest if it's all right to do it that way. But we they were sort of free wheeling. We kind of we had our one or two questions that we wanted to answer. So I think we need two people, so I guess there's everyone here today. <laughs> <laughs> like the other <laughs> Well Callie can Callie here. She's okay. up for real. Life. And she was she was the one that last year yeah. last year. So that's not that so, um, <laughs> And you were one of the most recent ones interviewed last year. Yeah, we came in together. <laughs> I didn't. I wasn't on the panel. Yeah. But anyway, so you would be a good candidate. I'm Kelly and I are together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, thank you, Linda. Thank you for stepping up. I appreciate that. I would do it as long as it's Zoom. Well, I'm going to come in. You're probably going to do it Zoom. I don't know. I, I would imagine that Zoom would be fine, especially because they're, they're very short. 
giant money. Yeah. Kind enough to mm -hmm. arrange it for us. Um, I think I'll get with um, Catherine and Linda offline and we'll schedule some times. How's that? And we'll work out the details. Okay. All right. Thank you for volunteering. I will be with you soon. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Okay, any other new business or unfinished business or board comments? Uh, the only thing I have an update on, which is really an update, I'm waiting to hear back from Billy Marks when he talked about that last right. Just to try to find some time from him when he's available to talk more. I don't want to just do it by email or talk to him about it. Doesn't does he really have to get he has to get the family to agree to do something? Well, it's the foundation and they fight. Yeah, uh, and that's one of the questions I have to find out. I do know that he's gone to other museums, or at least one or two, uh, in California for presentations. Oh, okay. so he's gone. So, and plus he doesn't at this club too. Okay. Uh, but I met him yeah. about three or four years ago. But he just started doing like the reminiscing and the things uh, and the films and the photos this past year. So he's got something. He's got a small, got a small kind of a small presentation. Okay. I've got to find out if when he went, I forget what city he went to, but I was talking about it. Get to go to that one to see how extensive that was. So he may have more together than we think. And, okay. and so and hopefully that's the case. That would be great if you do a presentation doing film. Or something to work with uh, Justin Beach. Not yeah. We are, you know, we usually plan a number of months. Oh, I know. And I, 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 I'm I, figuring it might be something that happens in the next four months. Yeah. Yeah. Not next month. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Although, like I said, last month, Billy Mark said, hurry up. Because <laughs> he's 86 or 87. Not that that means anything. But in his mind, he was just being funny, you know. Okay. Great. Okay, is there a motion to adjourn? Oh, I'm sorry. Did you have something? Yeah. Oh, I have my finger poised. Oh, right. Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought you were like, wait a minute. I have a comment. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Susie. Well, I just had a meeting after school, so I was <laughs> Well, you come just in time for us to adjourn. <laughs> oh, oh, you're kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Catherine, a second. Perfect. <laughs> that was an easy All in favor? Okay, we are adjourned. It is 5.04. <laughs>